got yet another little interesting one here, but I actually first heard about this because people were suggesting I alter what we're pulling. The first room of this dungeon seems like it'd be mandatory, but you can actually fight this boss in a position that you don't really even have to worry about many of his mechanics. And then just, you can skip the entire room, which I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest, but it really doesn't give that much count. And it's basically just one giant AOE pack and then two single mobs that actually end up healing up and being really awkward to kill. So I think we're going to try that. There's going to be a new route down below low for you guys to check out and download if you want as well but in this video i want to focus on what's actually happening with the boss because i think this is a really interesting strategy and again i have to say it yet again this is one of the things i love about mythic plus people still find new tech and new reasons to do this tech all these months and months later let's take a look at it Actually hard to see in this corner to be honest, I really don't love it. Yeah, I just got hit by that. Wait, what was that? Rooted. Oh yeah, I got hit by the, the frontal, yeah. Seems very easy to pull off as well. I'll show you a little bit more about the route and how we set this up. But in general, you just come and bring him over here. I guess all of these outer areas have these little kind of al alcoves and platforms with these kind of right angles of decorative wall area that you can use for this. This one seems like the most obvious one to me because it's the closest one that you could bring the red slime to. This is actually another nice thing about this. It makes it a lot easier to get the red slime over here because there's these line of sight areas, but also it's just a less amount of distance the red slime has to travel. But it's the plague stop we're looking to avoid i haven't really done this enough to say if there's any actual problems but i have already noticed that in this footage it's kind of hectic when you get him over there with the ur or whatever the relics and all that stuff and then his first mechanic you got to be really ready to try to line of sight that it seems to me that as long as he's kind of just above this little right angle here you can line of sight as well because his hitbox is actually in front of it and i was still able to duck into the corner and do it no problem but it's going to avoid the knockback as you see and it's also going to avoid the damage so that's really really important. I think this is one of those things that only came about because people are doing keys that are just so high that they literally can't survive the actual damage he's doing. And this is kind of just one of those things that it's like really a no fail mode thing because it's not like if you tank him in the normal spot, people can line to sight it. So even if you bring him over here and nobody does it but you, then you haven't really lost anything. There's no actual penalty for fighting over here. In fact, I would say there's even a benefit to it. You'll see the slimes here. And this is really the best part about this because on this encounter, he always spawns the big slime at the closest area that it can spawn around the giant circle of slime to where you have him so you know exactly where he's going to spawn that thing now because we're standing over here but the good thing is the small slimes will have to travel from a very uniform direction and a lot of times if you kind of tank them in the middle of the room they'll come in at odd competing angles but because they're all coming into this really far away area those angles converge into a single point and they're literally all stacked up right on top of each other by the time they reach to the boss you still have to do you know see seeing the slimes and stuff i don't actually really know what happens if you get too many slimes i'm not sure if they spawn right on top of each other or something like that i haven't seen enough about that so if you guys do know more about that comment down below but as of right now it seems like an absolute slam dunk to me get that red slime over in this corner get this boss kind of tucked into this corner as well and he probably any of this area works as well it doesn't have to be this specific spot if you're not in love with it you're just looking for one of these right angles here that you can duck behind and take cover from the stomp or whatever and then that's it it's going to prevent all the 
the damage from the mechanic. It's going to prevent the knockback. And of course, you're really actually really close to the boss still. So you're barely going to go out of melee range. If you see me do this fight, I always try to time a blink or have death's advance up to stay in melee range and stay in the red slime so I can keep up the huge haste buff. Well, now this just got a lot easier. So I hope that helps. But I also want to talk a little bit about the route. So as you see, this opening room actually only gives 7.3% count. And like I said, you know, pulling all these small guys are cool and all, and they also can help you potentially kill the boss. But I feel like it's kind of a bait man. And I've had a lot of trouble with this on certain affixes as well. These big guys are a little bit more efficient, but they just have the potential to really take a long time because of course, if the smaller slimes get to them, they heal and just not really sure of a great strategy. I've never really felt comfortable fighting those, but I always felt like it was mandatory. 7.3%. So here's what the actual route looks like. So we're just literally first thing is just going to be fighting this big trash pack down here, which is actually quite nice because this is one of the hardest packs in the entire dungeon. So when you start this pack and you guarantee that every single person has all their CDs up, yeah, that's not too bad at all. Obviously we're envisioning the start, but then you have to skip this room too. It's not necessarily difficult, but you just realize you have to actually run through the slime to do it. I mean, you can probably get by this guy in different ways, but realistically, you're going to have to cut through the slime one way or the other, make sure nobody aggros him. Then you're just doing the exact same route I would normally do with three additional packs added. Typically this pack here, I would not pull. I was doing it early in the season and I was fine with it on like tyrannical weeks and stuff, but these slimes are a real pain. And especially if you lack interrupts, they can be dangerous. Now I also got a tip that those mobs actually don't like cast on players. They just hit people near them, which I had no idea that was the case. So pretty much everybody else in the group can move out of it. Tank can move too, but I've heard it's like a 10 yard range. So pretty unrealistic. They're going to start getting all separated if you try to move, but the DPS can do that regardless. As long as you have a disease to spell, this isn't really that dangerous and you pretty much have to pull the first pack of them anyway. But that's one of the packs we're adding. At this point, it starts to become a little awkward. I'm not really in love with the next two and we're going to get the extra count in this area here. So the main addition is that we're adding this pack here. This was already on the route. I used to drag this guy down and try to combine him with the brood ambusher. Now we're getting this like really awkward, just kind of like single dude who's just standing there. You also just get this guy instead, whatever is easier. I don't think it really matters, but that's an extra shielding guy. So it's probably easier. These two are a little bit closer together anyway. And, and then this pack is the one that I really don't like having to do, but it does seem pretty much obligatory at this point. So grab this guy make sure you get him out of stealth and then just drag him over and we're going to fight this stuff. Honestly, a lot of the times you do this dungeon, somebody accidentally pulls this anyway, because like the right side ambushers, small spiders will kind of spawn over here and then people will run over here to try to knock them back and they'll just get too close to the tentacle anyway. So I don't feel like it's ideal and I really don't like fighting a tentacle, but yeah, this is pretty much it. A hundred point three percent. We can still grab the mind control ad and kill that, but I, I honestly don't really know what other options there are. Somebody said I can try to get this plague rock, but it's only actually two percent. So that doesn't really help us get to the finish line there. So if anyone has any better suggestions, let me know. But honestly, it just doesn't really matter. This key is really straightforward. The trash can be difficult if you don't have the right comp or you don't have a good approach to some of the trash, but you could even just not even do this part and it'd perfectly be fine. I think the big thing here is just making sure that this boss is in that area with that red slime. It's going to die far quicker. People are going to take far less damage and everything's just going to go smoother. But I'm going to give this a try for the rest of the season. So if you guys want to stop by the stream and check it out, you can let me know if you have any experience with any of this stuff. Otherwise, thank you for watching. We probably don't have a lot of time left with Plague Fall Man, so I'm excited to find out new text still all of this months later. It's still exciting to me. I love this kind of stuff, man. I hope that we will see more of this kind of stuff in season four and into Dragonfly. I hope you're along for the ride. Thank you for watching. We will see you guys in the next video.